And this is Stitchless TV. And today we are going to make the everyday chic tear dress hat. Now with the hack, for the upper part of the dress, it just remains the same. So this upper bodice. So the front, the back, the sleeves and the facings remain the same. The only things that change are when we do the skirt and adding another tier. Now I think it's important for you to see the parts of the bodice that I have stabilised. So I've cut one front to a fold, exactly the same as the pattern told me to do, but so there is a little dot which signifies where you cut down to, but we don't do that yet, okay? So I've stabilised that front bit that's going to be cut and sewn, and I've stabilised around the neck. Now everything else is the same. So the front facing that is cut to a fold, it's shaped like this. Now because my fabric's a tiny bit sort of see-through, I've just continued down so it ends up like a, it will end up like a block, I'll show you here, <laughs> that will go down like that on the front. But you can just cut the facing exactly the same. But you do want to mark where you've got to stop where you've got to stop if you're snipping down or where you stitch down. So that was all of the upper bodice, the bodice and the sleeves of the everyday sheet dress. That does not change, okay? But I'm now gonna show you what we do to the skirt part and what I did to get the proportions for the tear at the bottom. So this is the actual skirt back, okay? Now you don't have to do it like this, remember, just I've chosen to do it like this. So first of all, I folded back the waistband by six centimeters, which is about two and a half inches. So if I fold back that bit, then you can see. So this is on the back skirt of the everyday sheet dress. So then it came down here and I then shortened mine. Now remember I am quite short. I shortened it by about 18 centimeters, which is about seven inches. So then I fold back that amount. So I've ended up with this, okay. Now it's cut to a fold. You know that it's cut to a fold, don't you? The back piece is cut to a fold. So what you need to know is how much, how much have I added? So how much did I cut it away from the fold? Now I've cut mine 14 centimeters away from the fold, which is about five and a half inches. Now it's always handy to put a little notch for where the center is, the center fold and I put it down at the bottom. Now this is going to form the first tier. So this is the back and then this will all get gathered up here and attached to the back bodice. Now the front of the skirt, I did exactly the same thing as I did at the back. Now the reason why I shortened the, the skirt part, the first section of the skirt part, is I felt with the gathers and everything that these pockets ended up being too long. Well, they did for me. They might look all right on you, but for me, they ended up being too long. So that's also six centimeters shorter, so it lines up with the back, obviously, uh, which was two and a half inches. So this is the skirt front, which is cut to a fold, 
yeah? So it's the same as the pattern piece, so I just fold back that, so you can see it ends up being shorter in the pocket, yeah? And then I did the same for the bottom, I made the bottom the same amount shorter as the other one, which I think was 18 centimetres, about 7 inches, so if I fold that up. So then you need to know how much did I cut it away from the fold? So I did exactly the same as the back, which is about whatever I said the back was. Did I say 14? 14 centimetres, which is about six, five and a half inches, six inches. So it should be the same as the back. So then, once again, the same as the back, that will end up being gathered into the bodice. Now, you need to know this. Whatever I shorten that front skirt part by, I have to also shorten the pocket. So the pocket facing has to be shortened by the same so that it fits. And then also the pocket, I think they call it the pocket back which is kind of like the sack of the pocket, that also has to be shortened by the same. Now that's only if you're doing this. You may not be doing, you might not be doing, um, doing this. Now I was limited by fabric, so I have also made the pocket a bit shorter because they are enormous pockets, which is a good thing, of course. Now, it is very important to apply some stabiliser to the edge of the entrance to the pocket, on the skirt, which is your first tier, and on your pocket facing, which I think they call the pocket front, on both of them, because you don't want this to stretch out of shape. So that's the, the skirt adjustments on the everyday sheet dress to make it a gathered first tier. Now you don't have to make that first tier gathered. In this version by Laura, she doesn't gather the first part of the dress. She just adds a frill at the end. So you might prefer to do that. So for the last tier at the end, now remember these measurements are for me really. Uh, but if you're five feet tall and you want it to look like mine, then you might want to follow these measurements. So basically, you need to cut a big rectangle for the last tier at the front and at the back. So you'll be cutting two of them to a fold. So we're ready to sew. And the first thing that we're going to do are the pockets on the skirt or the first tier. Remember, it is important that you stabilise those edges and I simply cut a strip of interfacing, snipped into it so that it could go around this curve and just ironed it on. So, I want you to open up your fabric so you've got right sides up and you're going to put your pocket facings, but I think they call them pocket fronts, right sides together right sides together with your skirt fabric and then pin or clip it into place and you're going to sew a small seam allowance away from the edge. So backwards and forwards in the beginning. Now do you see why you have the stabiliser? So I've got a kind of stretchy fabric as well because of the, the creases in it. And because I have the stabiliser on, my fabric is not stretching. Now even though you've done a small seam allowance, you still need to snip into it on the curves.
before turning your pocket sack the other way and having a look at what you've got. But we're going to do some understitching now and we understitch on the facing side. Skirt on the top, now we've got our facing, facing on the side. Now you have to push all of your seam allowance towards that facing and you don't have to go backwards and forwards but you've got to make sure your seam allowance is on this side and you're going to sew like a couple of millimetres away from the edge. So as usual I'm in a funny position so it is tricky for me but I'll try and be straight. Now because you snipped into your curve carefully it should be fine when you open out your fabrics to sew close to that edge, the seam edge. So that is understitching and it should look like that. So that's what you've done and what happens is when you press it, and maybe when you don't actually, um, it makes the stace, it makes the facing stay back like that. But it is important to snip in when we snipped in on that curve. So still on the same pocket, so that was that pattern piece, yeah? The pocket front or pocket facing, because it is like a facing. You're then going to get the piece that says pocket back. And you remember the you should have a little notch on that, which tells you it's the side seam, but it also tells you where it's going to line up with that shape of the pocket that we've just done. So, you should have two pieces of the pocket backs, and you're going to get it and put it right sides together with the pocket that you've just done, get it all lined up nicely, those edges, okay, and then start to pin them so it's ready for you to sew all the way around that edge. So you're not stitching through everything, you're stitching these two layers together. So if you did round the edge like me, just um, pretend it was meant to be like that and trim it off. Now you need to zigzag, uh, overlock or just use pinking shears to finish off that edge but I'll show you what the right side looks like but if you've got any plans to top stitch this now is the time to do it before you stay stitch because I'm not sure I might do a little top stitch on there which does slightly defeat the object of under stitching <laughs> I'm just going to stay stitch it along the top there and down here on the side seam, just then I don't have to worry about anything moving. So both pockets finished, it's time now, using the largest stitch on your sewing machine, you need to not go backwards and forwards, so no closing off the end, largest stitch, stitch along the top of your skirt and then don't go backwards and forwards at the end because we are going to gather the top which then gets fitted to the front bodice. So same thing again if you want to, well actually it is probably time to, you can pull one thread, not both threads, and start easing your gathers along. Just do it slowly, because you don't want them all to kind of twist under. So I usually do one side, making my way to the middle. And right, I'm going to start doing it from the other side, just pulling one thread. I'm just doing the top thread. So my fabric is right sides on the inside, 
And I know that because I put stabiliser around the neck. So this is the back piece. And in theory, I have a little notch here, which I do have, but I'll make it bigger so you can see. So that notch down there that's difficult for you to see is the centre back on the back bodice. And I should have a notch somewhere here. I think it's that one there which is the centre back on the gathered part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flop over so my fabric's right sides together, you can't tell because they're both the same. And I'm just going to put a clip there for the moment but I will be using pins. I will be using pins for this. Now I normally put a pin in the middle or a clip, a pin at the end So I know how much I need to like ease or, or gather to, to make it fit. Now this, like some miracle, um, this actually fits, I can't believe it. So I'm just going to put some temporary clips there for now, but I will be using pins. Now like I said, because I'm working to the stripes of the gingham, I'm actually probably doing a slightly smaller seam allowance than, um, than the pattern. Let's have a little look. So, it's going to look a bit like that. So you pin your back skirt, your first tier, onto the back bodice like that. And actually, do exactly the same for your front as well. Now once you're happy with the spacing of your gathers, using, I'm using a bit smaller than a number three, a medium stitch, I would suggest with the gathers on the top, so you can see what's going on, start sewing in the well of your gathers. Now I've really got to keep track of these, these lines, but basically you're just going to keep sewing all along so this is on a medium stitch now until you get to the other side in the well of your gathered stitch line. So there we go. So that's my back back skirt or first tier attached onto the back section. So now you do exactly the same with the front. Right, so you've got to attach your front skirt in the same way as we did for the back onto your front bodice, ignoring my strip. Ignore, ignore. So when you've stitched it to your um, skirt, you need to overlock and press it up. Now in the pattern, at this point, you would be attaching the sleeves and then closing up the uh, side seams. But for, before we do that, I'm just going to add my final tier onto the bottom. And you do that in exactly the same way. So I want you to do a large stitch along the top of your final tier, gather it and attach it in exactly the same way as we just did this. I've just pinned my bow on there. But you're not doing that. But once you've completed the second tier and you've overlocked it and pressed it, it should be looking something like this. Although yours is probably going to look something a bit more. Get your two raglan sleeves, keep track of which is the front and which is the back. The two notches go to the back and make sure you've got the, the stabiliser on the neck bit if you've got slightly weak fabric. So this is how to attach the raglan sleeve.
So it doesn't really matter whether you start with the front or the back, but what does matter is that you do not mix up which is the front of the raglan sleeve and which is the back. The back has two notches, the front has one notch. Okay, so I'm just going to move the pattern. So this is where my two notches are. So I know, and also on the pattern, there'll be where you match it up. So I know my two notches have to go together and match up with the notches on the sleeve. Now there will be that little overhang there, but by the time you do the seam allowance, it will end up being straight. So pin or clip your raglan sleeve into place with the back raglan sleeve onto the back of the dress and do that on both sides. So I'm starting up at the neck and I'm a seam allowance away. Now you do get this little crossing over thing, okay? Now that's correct, so that isn't a mistake. And at the point where they cross should be like 1.5 seam allowance, 1.5 centimetre seam allowance, which is actually included in the pattern. A bit late saying it now, but just so you know. So, sewing the seam allowance away, just keep going around this little armhole bit. No stretching, but making sure everything lines up and backs and forwards at the end to reinforce the end and then you'll overlock that or zigzag or leave it. Okay so I've overlocked it and I've pressed it towards the sleeve. So then it looks like that. Do you want to see the back? So for you, your back and your front are going to more or less look the same. But I think it's probably interesting for you to see how far down or up um, the bodice naturally comes. Because I haven't adjusted the length of that. Now, before I'm going to stitch up the side seams, I'm going to look at this front, the front opening. So let's deal with that now. So on the wrong side of my fabric, I've got a stabiliser under here and um, I kind of folded it in half and pressed it. So there's like a line there as well. Uh, there's also a dot that signifies where you're supposed to stop. Now, I know this isn't how the pattern says to do it, but I'm, I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to line up the middle, the middle of where my opening is meant to be. And I've marked on the facing where it's supposed to, to stop. So I'm going to make sure that lines up with the press line that I have on the... Um, the front and I'm going to stick a pin in there. So can you see that? Now I'm also going to just pin kind of halfway around on the neck. Now I know on the pattern it's 1.5 centimetres but I don't want to do 1.5 centimetres. I'm going to do as small as I can get away with because I quite like the neck being a little bit smaller. So you're not confused. Do you remember I said that for the front facing, the pattern goes like that. But because my bodice is a bit see-through, I quite fancy it being wider. But it's going to be exactly the same process. So, what we're going to do, when I take this off the stand, which you could have done on a table, I'm going to start here, so look, I haven't attached the back yet. I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to come around here, and then stop like a sewing foot away from this line, 
come down, and as I come down, I know the way that Laura says to kind of do the little V thing. I'm going to come down to a point, actually, pivot my needle and start to come up on the other side. So I end up being a sewing machine foot away from there, like half a centimetre. And then I'm going to start travelling up there and stop. So should we do that now? So I actually think it would be a lot easier to do this you know, like ages ago, this first little applying the facing on. You don't have to do it all the way round, but just to get this, this opening done, you know, way, way before adding the um, raglan sleeves. Anyway, we're doing it like this now. So I've let the back of the dress hang out at the back of the machine. I'm quite a small seam allowance away from the edge. I have to use pins for this, not clips. And I'm tracing out the neck. I'm just going slowly in that funny position. Tracing out the neck. Now it's all stabilised at the back. Oh, it really is tricky here. Um, not doing it, just in this position. So, now you can see where the notch is for the middle, and you can see maybe my pencilled line going down there. So I'm going to stop there, lift up the needle, drop it because I'm going to start sewing down here. So in the beginning I'm going to have the width of the sewing foot on the edge of the line which signifies the middle but I'm going to start coming in so when I get to the ball of that I'm actually becoming a point. Well, it's not a point, it's a one stitch. So you kind of stop, do one stitch, and then come up the other side. So let's do that. So coming down straight, this is so important, this bit, gosh. Beginners would find this quite tricky, I think. So I'm coming down straight. Now you can do it the way the pattern says. Don't feel like you have to do it this way. I'm going to stop there. And put my needle in. And I'm just going to do one stitch, because very often points are not, are not points, actually. See, this is quite tricky to do this now, because you've got all this fabric, and I just don't think it's necessary. So, yeah, this is tricky doing it now. So I'm going to do one stitch. Yep, yeah, I think that should be fine, or shall I do two stitches? Maybe two stitches. <laughs> And then lift up the needle, and now we've got to push all of this through. Look, all this fabric. Right, so turn everything around. I hope you're able to see. So basically, I'm coming up the other side now, okay? And I want to end up being a sewing foot away from my centre notch there. But I've got this line here to guide me. I'm coming out not to put my head in the way. Oops. Yep. Stop so symmetrical on to the other side. Turn it around, making sure everything is flat. So do pause because it's easy to trap something underneath. And start coming up whatever seam allowance you're doing on the other side of the curve of the neckline. So I've got the dress laying sideways, so the front's going down there, yeah? This is the neck, and this is the stitch line that we've just done, coming up on the other side. Now, before I cut it, I want to see what it looks like on the other side, where it's a bit more accurately mapped out, and probably should have sewn it that way. That is my centre line there, which you can't really see but I can tell it's in the centre and it's fine. So, let's go back to here. So even though we haven't attached the back facing on, you can sort of prepare this now, and I think I'm going to. So I'm going to cut down with sharp scissors very carefully and as I get nearer to the end, now 
If you did do it bigger, then you stop a little bit away from the end and you go and create this V where you don't go over your stitches, but you do need to do little snips. Don't go over your stitches. <laughs> right up to the corners. And you do need to snip into the curve of your neckline. So I'm just going to do it where I sewed so I can have a good old look at it. And I am going to mitre those points. So should we just have a little peek at it? Now when you fold in corners, I don't know if you know, if you fold in the seam allowance and press against your finger, push all that stuff down. So I'm just having a little look. So you will be pressing it. You can understitch if you want, but I don't really think it's going to need it. So I'm going to have a fiddle with this and press it. So that is definitely good enough. And yeah, so what happens is if you want, you can press them open like that, can't you? I'm going to leave it like that for now. What we have to do now is we have to attach the rest of the facing on. I do feel very uh, conscious this is just like a massive dip of gingham. But anyway, so I need to put my front facing inside out again, even though I've just sewn it. Yeah. Stitch your facing together. Stitch your back facing to your front facing so that it's ready to be attached. So that's the front. Fabric is right sides together. We've already done this. So we're now looking at the inside of the facing. Um, we're just going to stitch the facing on. And then snip into all your curves. Okay, so even though my fabric is quite thin, and I know that by the time I press that facing, it will stay down, just to please the sewing police, I'm going to understitch it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the seam allowance towards the facing and I'm going to stitch just a little bit away from the edge. Don't look at my dirty ironing board. If you want to know how best to press your facing, it's with your dress inside out over an ironing board like this and also look you can see the understitching. Now what I want you to do is finish off the edge, the loose edge of your facing all the way around. So I think that is very neat. Now you do need to catch your facing, you can just do little tacks or you can stitch to the actual seam allowances all the way round or you can top stitch it following the line of the facing. I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. Now we're really, really nearly done. All we have to do is put our dress right sides together so put it inside out and we're going to match up the armpit first and so from the armpit down the sleeve I have shortened my sleeve by about ooh, two inches four five centimeters and then you're going to sew from the armpit going all the way down 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 matching up your seams of your uh, bodice to your, where it joins to the skirt and where your first here is and then matching up the hems and you'll do that on both sides and then we're nearly done right so I am ready to sew I like to start in the armpit actually not only because then I can like line it up before doing a sleeve but then when I come in and do the sleeve I over sew it so that will reinforce the armpit of the raglan sleeve so it's a straight stitch all the way down and if you've got annoying lines from the gingham like me, then you've got to line those up. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So look, side seams done, pockets, facing done, oh. facing at the back, all good, come back around the front. So all you have to do now is 
hem the bottom. So you can do that however you want. You can overlock and then press it and sew it or press twice. And you need to hem the sleeves. The way I did the sleeves was I folded it once and then I folded it again and I stitched it. So I'm going to finish this one off and then I'll try it on. So hopefully you can see all of that. I've had to put you really far away. I'm styling it up with some green because red doesn't really suit me. Well, it doesn't feel like it does anyway. So you can have a look at some closer bits, but these are the pockets, which I think are pretty good. It is a bit see-through. So look, you can see it's a bit see-through. So I'll have to wear a slip. So we gathered it a little bit on the skirt part. Added a tip to the bottom, but we did shorten it from the waist and the hem. I'll put my bag down. Uh, I made the sleeves a bit shorter, but then I've also done hemmed turn-ups as well. But I think it looks kind of good. Come and look at some details. There. Nice bag. So, um, yeah. So we did the facing a little bit bigger and actually no everything else about the upper bodice was the same can you see the pockets nice pockets so that was our everyday chic tear dress hack on the pattern from so different thank you so much for watching and see you again very soon oh if you like tear dresses Go and have a look at our pontoon tear dress. Bye!